Um, probably the the one of the things other than the glamour Madeira and Pat's um, patterns, but in particular the pattern we're going to tie tonight that is difficult to get is Jeff. I see you just logged on to Instagram. Um, kind of chatting with a few people while Katie gets us loaded back up on YouTube. Um, the sometimes the internet connection it hasn't happened in a long time, but when the internet connection stinks, we get kicked off. Well, we're back on YouTube now. We are back on YouTube. Well, let me see if I can I'll let you find it while I'm can I hand this to you, honey? So you can get over here. Um yeah, so the uh, the hard thing on these 22s and 24s is consistently finding that size of um, feathers. So, because um, <clears throat> it doesn't take much, and I'm fortunate that uh, that I've got a grizzly saddle here that's all between 22 and probably 26. It's really small, but those are pretty hard to come by. Um, so you can either get just a, a regular rooster neck or cape, and the, the top part's going to have those small pieces. Um, the small feathers, uh, or you can get the hunter packs. And I would imagine they do have the smaller sizes in the hunter packs. And if you could find a hunter pack with 22s or we are going to be time Pat's midge. It is Pat Dorsey's, um, midge pattern. It's a dry pattern. Uh, it is, I should just had it up. I'll zoom in here. See if we can get it to, there's our vice and, Here's the, the fly. So this is a size, I think this one's a size 22, but this is a little dry fly version of the, the pattern. Um, <clears throat> so Katie, are we on YouTube? We are on. You're, you're showing the fly right now. Okay. Can you just get this thing maybe going so I can see? Okay. So everyone on YouTube, um, we were talking about getting a hook in the vice. So the hook we're going to use is the, TMCO 101, and we're going to start with the size 22. Like I said, we're going to start big on this one. And I'm going to really go over a few different tricks and tips to help with everything. Um, and we will get this going. I've got to put my glasses on. And as you can see, the way I put these teeny tiny, the small hooks in the vise, I just get it firmly or not firm, but I get the uh, the hook probably deeper in the vise than it should be. I'm not too worried about it being straight, but then, then I can grab it by the hook eye and then get it exactly where I want. And one thing you want to, then I can tighten up. Uh, you can make a, a mistake, and I'll try to zoom in here so you can see better. You can make a mistake um, and damage your jaws, or if you're using... Um, a different style of jaw. If you get it too close, it can pop the hook out and you got hooks sitting everywhere. But if you get them too close to the edge, right on the edge of your, um, of your jaws, all that pressure right on the tip of your jaws can damage your jaws. So you want to make sure you be pretty careful um, when you're putting the smaller hooks in the vise. I've, I um, spent a little extra time doing this and also big hooks that have got like marabou and the the hook shanks kind of covered up. Like we're doing articulated, you're switching back and forth, you're putting the hook back in the vise. That can be a time you want to be a little, little more careful with it. And speaking of vices, if you notice, I switched out the um, jaws for the um, uh, for the standard jaws, and I've dug out of my drawer because I've been tying some smaller flies, the mids jaws, and I wanted to show this real quick too. So. One of the nice things about the, um, yeah, you, can, you can leave it on the, leave it on the, the vice. So I've just got this little ruler, and the way I've got it is so it, it doesn't move. So the 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 measurement there is the same. The what the measurement is, it's it's not a not a big deal. But you see, when I rotate it, it really doesn't go up and down hardly at all. And that's one thing with this master vise, you're able to raise the, the jaws up or down depending on the size of hook you use. Now, if I went to a size 18, I'm not going to change the side, change the angle of the, the vise. But if I went to a size one, I probably would because a lot of vices, when you when you rotate your hook around, the, um, the <clears throat> shank of the hook goes up or down quite a bit more. So... Just a neat way to test and see if you've got the um, 
You got your mice set correctly. Oh, I see someone said something on here. What is this? Oh, can Pat enlighten us on what to take to Patagonia region headed there in January 2024? I think he and Forrest have fished it a few times. Second to that, is there a midge Euro fly? Um, there are midge Euro flies out there for sure. Um, one of the ones that I like to use it can be a midge, can be um, billy bug flies. It's YouTube's working now. Thank you so much. Unfortunately, it's not working for me. Um, yes, Katie's got it just now up. Cool. Um, I really like Devin Olson's Diabetes. That one, even though it's not a midge per se, but that one's pretty cool. John Boy's already putting 46 in. So, John Boy, you're the first comment I've seen on YouTube since we went back live. I told um, them to go ahead and put their numbers in, but I've been noting them. Okay. Sounds good. What are we doing? One to what? One to 100. One to 100. So, Ken had to go. So, he went and get, had a game. He has, it was like 34 or something. Okay. Um, all right. So, let's get time. So, the, the thread I'm going to use is Semperfly Classic Wax 18 aught. So, this is the smaller thread here. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave it up until Katie switches this over. Um, there. Okay, so we've got the 18 aught um, classic white thread in, in black, and we've got our Tempco 101. So I'm going to start my, my thread right in the, the middle uh, of the hook shank, right, roughly there, and work it back just to start the thread. Now, because the, the hook shank is really narrow, so the, the wire diameter is small, and my thread diameter is small, I'll put a couple extra wraps on it before I break off my tag in. So being a small, teeny tiny fly, you want to really minimize and your thread wraps and make every thread wrap count. Um, so with that said, uh, I think it's rust, um, but the, the shuck, which is the way when a midge emerges, uh, a lot of times it gets stuck in a shuck. So when you're, you're observing the midges on the water, you'll see there's the, the, the profile looks a lot bigger than, um, than you would initially think a midge is. And that's because it's kind of dragging its trailing shuck. It's, it's stuck. So it's got that little chunk of the, the shuck behind it. So in Pat's pattern, he uses Zelon that's a reddish um, coachman color. Uh, and in this pattern, we're going to use uh, the EP trigger point fibers in rust. That's just because I don't have... I've got the Zelon a bunch of colors, but I don't have a Coachman Brown or a Rust or red color. So I'm using the EP Trigger Point Fibers. Pull out a little pawn here. And I have a very small bundle here. Maybe, let's see, it's probably through 12, 15 fibers. Um, as you can see, I've got a knot tied here. It's that little knot. So I can just keep on using this bundle over and over and over again. And the tips stay relatively lined up. So I'm going to trim my a bunch here. So it's lined up. Now we're going to go back to the hook shank. Stuck in the film. Yep, that's correct, Steve. So we've got our little bundle here. Set it right here. Do a pinch wrap. Pull straight down. And now we're going to wrap our thread back. Keeping that material on the top of our hook shank. Now touching wraps, bring it back up, just like this. I want to make sure that you see I didn't cover everything. It's probably not a big deal, but I want to go back just to make sure that I get everything covered. So we got a nice little black body. That's one thing with this. See how it's pretty much getting covered now. Um, with this uh, 18 knot thread, it's only 30 denier, so it's roughly half the diameter of most of the other smaller threads, so you can really afford to do that. Um, if you got a little bit hanging out here, not too big a deal, we'll trim that out. Um, so the shuck needs to be roughly the, um, the same length as the hook shank. So I'm just going to take my, my shuck, my material here, put my scissors to where it stops at the hook eye. So see how I kind of brought it where it stops there, material over, cut it. 
And if you'll cut it like that, you'll have your, your shuck with the same on every single one of them. Of course, it will get bigger or smaller depending on the hook size, but every size 22 will have the same size, same length of a, of a shuck. Fine as frogs here, split four ways. Speaking of splitting stuff, I'm going to go with the um, the white Zelon. So this is white Zelon, and <clears throat> I've taken one standard hank of it and then split it in half, and once again tied my knot right there. I really like the method of tying knots because it keeps everything together and makes it to where once I get my hank, I can use all of it versus keeping it loose. And then next thing you know, I've got scraps just kind of sitting around. So tying that knot in there. Um, <laughs> thanks, Gary. Tying that knot in there keeps um, keeps your, your material that's like this nice and easy to come to, um, to use. So I'm just going to take this and actually I'll just leave it kind of long. We'll just trim it. So <clears throat> I'm going to hold this like so. Right on top of the hook shank, do a little pinch wrap again. And see how that one wrap, we've got that there on top of the hook shank. Make sure it's good there. Wrap back just a little bit. Just locked in. And I'll pull all this material up here. Get our fine scissors. If you can see it, I want you to be able to see it. So it's not just my fingers. So you see that right there? Cut that off. And I've got it tied in. You guys ever use organza ribbon for any fly patterns? I don't think we've used the org. I'd be surprised if we didn't actually, but I I can't place it right now that we that we have used it. I can't either. Would you use flamer madeira? We use a lot of different things for sure. Okay, so we've got our um, our shuck tied in, or no, sorry, our wing tied in. Now there's a few different ways to do it. So you'll see some people. When they're doing this technique, we'll take a bob, bodkin and pull it over to that. I, this is so darn small that I just take my fingers and I just put, pinch, pinch the material. So now I've, I've let go, except for well, my left hand, I haven't. I'll just pull this over and make a little, make a little loop. So you can see how I've kind of got, you can see where my tie-in point's going to be. You can see the loose piece here. And now I'm just going to do another little pinch wrap here. I'll see what we're looking like. See how it looks, and that looks a touch long, which that's what I'm kind of shooting for because it's easier to make it long, make it shorter than it is to make it longer. So I'm just gonna pinch everything together. I'm gonna pull it until it is roughly the body length. I don't want it going much over the back of the body. So see how that's looking. Now we're going to just with open wraps tie this in because this is going to be kind of the feelers, the antenna, the antenna, the antenna of the fly. There we go. Now we can bring back with more open wraps. Okay. So there we go. Now we've got our, um, our body, everything made. All we have to do now is tie two more materials in and then we're done. Took 16, so put me down for 88. You guys and your fighting over all. numbers, you guys are doing great. Um, all right, so let's switch over to the side here. I'll give you a quick little peacock hurl. I don't want to say hack, but peacock hurl. Um, something I learned this from from uh, Nature Spirit, but I, I was talking with Forrest Dorsey uh, a while, oh gosh, probably four years, five years ago, and I was tying his Manhattan Midge, and I sent him some pictures of it, and I was like, what can I do better? And he said, your peacock curl is way too long. What you do is get the whole peacock, the, the actual feather itself, and uh, and different pieces of the feather, depending on how close or far away from the eye you get, the fibers will get longer or shorter. Well, that, that absolutely 100% works, but I wanted a way to kind of cheat. So I found out that Nature Spirit, as, long, as well as other companies, they will sell this long peacock curl. So this is your standard bag of peacock curl here, and here's your long peacock curl. So the fibers, the 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 
feather or the piece is a lot longer, but the flumes, the, the little fibers on the side, typically are a lot shorter on these than they are these. So if you're trying to consistently tie a bunch of really small flies, see if you can find some of this peacock curl that is the longer. This is 12 to 14 inch, and the, the regular is 6 to 8 inch. So it's roughly twice the length. Um, and um, I don't know if you get, I think you actually get less as far as number of pieces in this this, this bundle, but I've had these for, for quite a while. I honestly don't know how much they cost now, but... Um, the uh, so anyway, check these two these two out. So I'm going to grab a fresh piece just so we can see. And all I do is I look right in here and, and just find one that looks tasty to me, and pull it out by the tip. I'm trying to pull two out because one thing they are long. You can't use the whole thing once you get close to the the stem of it. Once to the, get to close to the base of it, it starts to get kind of yucky, but kind of thick. But you see, we've got our, our one piece here. All right, so enough of me yammering about the, the peacock curl. We'll cut the tip off of it, and I'm going to tie this in kind of somewhat on the bottom of it. I think Pat ties his in, his in uh, second with the, the, um, the rooster in first. But we'll tie this on the bottom. We'll call that good for now. Now, the um, as far as our grizzly hackle, let's just make sure that I'm grabbing the right piece here. And let's check the length of it. That one looks fine. We don't need it to be really, really big. How is Tim? Oh, you're not talking to me. Different John. Hey, John. Sorry, I'm just now seeing the... Uh, She's not actually paying attention to the comments a little bit. I was saying hi to John Collins. Well, hello, John. I thought, I thought uh, Joe was asking me how Tim was, and I was like, I don't know who Tim is. Tim Flagler? Tim. I was telling Which Joe that I was feeling a little under the weather today. Oh. And he says that he's watching. he was watching Lord of the Rings. Oh, oh gosh. And then I said hi there. That's something. Peacock dubbing can definitely work. You can use peacock dubbing if you'd like. If you prefer that, absolutely. I'm gonna try, I was trying to cut the, the stem before I uh, tied it in because sometimes it can be somewhat hard to uh, to find. All right, so now we've got both the peacock and the um, the hackle tied in. And you all are just sitting on a ton of size 22 hackle, right? Mike, you've got plenty. John, Gary. Well, hello, Gary. I love it now that, now that John's come on. Everyone's saying, hey, John. I look up and I'm like, Gary, I thought you already said hey. There are two Johns in the world, I guess. The small humidity pack comes with cigars when you order them. You'll like the results. I've never thought about that, Al. Humidity pack. That's that's interesting because I, I store my feathers typically with a um, a desiccant. Is that right? It's not my saying right. A desiccant pack to keep everything good and dry um, to keep bugs out. All right, so let's switch back over the hook and we'll wrap this thing up and and um, get this one going. She's good. She was just I could hear her breathing heavy, but she's run outside door. She's outside the door right now. Um, let's switch over to the hook and I'll <clears throat> finish this one out. Okay, so we've got our peacock tied in. All we're going to do is just wrap it around, touching wraps. And if in this part, we're about to squish all this down. So this part does not have to be absolutely gorgeous and pretty. You do want to make sure you've got a nice thin stem, but like that looks perfect right there. See how that, that's looking right there? That looks good. Um, oh, shoot. <laughs> you guys thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? We'll just undo that. And Misha you guys is just not this. great, by the way. She's mad at us what? because it's been really cold outside and she hasn't been played with properly. Oh. It's true. Is it true? 
All right, we'll do that again. I'm just going to slap this in here. You don't mind if I slap it in there, do you, Katie? Mm -hmm. we, we went through a lot of conversation, and I, I, I yapped enough about what I was doing a second ago. You just keep banging them out over there. And so I'm just going to try to bang this one out a little bit better. Um, Gary is on, so if you mess up, he's here to... Well, I, I didn't look up at the comments after that happened. I'm, I'd be shocked if at least someone didn't say something. Gary says I have a high of 20 degrees. Well, we have a high that feels like 20 degrees. Well, our low last night was 18, I think. It's really cold, and it's the air here is wet, so it's There's super everything. cold. All right, so now let's get our... <clears throat> Hackle wrapped in here. Now three or four wraps is really all you need. I'm going to end with three. Just because this one's feeling like a three. I just banged into the camera. That's all I'm banging out now. All right, so I'm just putting two wraps here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut my... Um, Hackle feather out. <clears throat> and the reason I'm going to cut it now is here in a second. When I whip finish, I'm going to whip finish between this post or between the Zelon and the, the hook eye. When I do that, it's going to kind of stand up the Zelon. And then it makes it a little more difficult to, um, to get in here and cut anything out. So we got one, two, three, four. Makes it a little more difficult to cut anything out um, without cutting your zealon. So the reason we left this piece in here is because these are the feelers, these are the antenna, these these are the little um, front pieces of the front part of the fly. When you're at the peak, are you leaving space or is it tight? I typically, James, I typically do touching wraps, um, so I don't I don't leave step um, space. Uh, chili, chili, chili. Why not break off the hackle? For this small of a fly, there's not a, you don't have a whole lot of tie. There's not a, that's only two wraps of really thin thread that's holding it down. And I would be a little bit nervous breaking, just reaching and breaking the, the hackle off. Let's, let's finish this up real quick. Good questions. Thank you, Randy. That, that was a real, I like that. Last chance to pick a number. All right. So I'm going to cut Last this up. Chance. So I'm going to cut this off by, I want it to be about half the height of the hackle. So I take my scissors, I bring it down to roughly where I think it's going to be, and then I cut it off. And then kind of poof that out a little bit. And there we go. There's our, <clears throat> you can see the silhouette. We'll kind of see a silhouette of it. It's going to have a good silhouette to it. You can see someone can probably count those fibers. I was guessing 12 to 15 fibers. Looks like there's a little bit more noise cut some of it out like that um <clears throat> but um but this is going to be a really fun fly to, to to fish um notice how the eye is super clear it's clean looks good all that is phenomenal so let's switch over and we'll have you written a number down i have um, let me get these last few ones and then we should be good for you to draw we're not I'm not, we're not drawing. I'm just writing a number down. I know. Uh, the number is written down before they even pick their numbers a long time ago. Okay. So you've got the num one number in here. Yep. I wrote that down earlier tonight. Cool. So you just will draw out of there in just a second. Whew. I was getting worried. I was like, wait a minute. I'm confused. Yeah. I'm visible in the stream. Looks like you're just jumping. It happens, but we're going to be drawing numbers for a really cool prize pack with a whole bunch of different stuff that I couldn't even fit in the picture. Yes. So, hat. This is a fancy one that Whiting Farms sticker coaster from Semperfly, J Stalker, uh, Renamed. If you're a lady tire, you'll really like the Fly Girl sticker. If you're not, then you like the Fly Tire sticker. A Rex, A Rex, more J Stockard, A Rex, cool bandana, and the awesome Silver Fly sticker. And the fly that we tied live last week. Um, 
David, we're going to do it again. We're going to do it in a size 24 here in just a second. And it'll have a couple um, couple of extra things hey, we're going to show. It's, it's Rubes. We met Ruby Tuesday in Jersey. Yes, we did. It's good to see you again, Ruby Tuesday. Um, so, ready for me to pull out the number? Yeah, I think I got everybody. I've got the number here. Okay. I haven't been paying attention. I'm, I'm glad you liked the hoodie too. Figured we we got this when we were hanging out with Chris at the Blue Quill Angler and fishing up there. Indeed. Nineteen fibers, not nineteen. Steve, I, see, Steve has counted before. Is that before or after I I um cut a couple of them away? So you ready for me to announce which what number it is? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, forty nine. Forty nine. And as you can see, all of my writing, my scribblings. So let's see. I don't know that we have, I don't think we had anybody pick 49. Let's see, we had a 46, strong boy. That might be the closest. We had a 51, Bill Adams. So Bill Adams? Bill Brashears picked 47. Ooh. So that's kind of right in the middle, isn't it? Yep, that is 100% right in the middle. So we'll have to send out two. Okay. Well, we'll have to fight over the one fly because I just have the one. So well, am we'll... I right, guys? I'm thinking that it's a tie between Bill Brashears with 47 and Bill Adams. We'll have to send out two. Is that right? Yep. We've, we've got an extra toboggan and stickers and bandana, so we can send it out to both of them. Yeah, John Boy had 46, so he almost got it. Bill had 47, I believe. So, And um, sure. we'll throw some of these midges in one and the stonefly in the other. It'll make it easy. Tie. <laughs> John, it was a tie because we're tying. <laughs> okay, so two winners. That's awesome. Yeah, we can get another one of those somehow that together. Mm -hmm. No problem. No big deal. So that one, make sure that you give us a good address. Yep, shoot us your. Stuff. How do they shoot us their address, honey? You can send us our um, our your address, not our address. You can send us your address by emailing us at demuthflyfishing at gmail .com or on Instagram at demuthflyfishing. Send us a message there, and we will get it out to you asap, just in time to put your beanie on for the cool weather. That is correct. So. While Katie was talking, I loaded a size 24 TMCO 101 in the vise. Um, after we do this one, depending on time, I think I'll be able to bang this one out pretty quick. Do you want me to share some pictures first? Yes. Okay. I got a few pictures to share this week. Um, I want to thank everybody who submitted a picture. And also, we have some as well from last week, too, that we didn't get to show last week. So real quick, Catherine Valencia shared a picture of a fly that she tied and caught a fish on, which I always like to um, see those kind of pictures because it's just so fun. I think that was one that she had won at one of our giveaways a long time ago. Oh, and she, I think it's one that I tied, but I can't, it looks like one I tied, but she might have tied it. Okay. It was either one I tied or one she learned how to tie on the show and she wanted to show off the booty. Well, either way, it's, it's a fly somehow. Related to the new fly fishing. That is right. Or another, um, whether through our followers, one we gave away. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing that with us. And um, Ken B, um, a few weeks ago, won the Smitty's Fly Box giveaway. And he wanted to be sure that we shared the um, photos of some of the flies that he tied with his Smitty's Fly Box um, Set and what were those again? Were those mud? Um, what's the name of those? What was the name of the fly? Uh, mini dungeon, mini dungeon. That's right. And now to this week's submissions using turkey in various um, shapes and forms. We've got uh, a cricket fly that Josh Riston submitted. And then Flame Lily submitted a couple of different versions using turkey. Really cool different patterns here. Um, and then Jay Wilson, we picked that from Instagram. That's a really nice looking fly right there with the foam on top. And Freddie, 
Lovely. Great picture again. Two weeks in a row, Freddie. And then Kimby. And when Kimby ties, I tell you what, he, he doesn't tie for I'm just going to tie one fly. He, he's like, look, I, I'm going to sit down and tie. He's like, I, I had to order all this stuff directly right. from Australia. And these guys sent us the Smitty's fly box from Australia. So I'm going to tie a couple. He can send it. He's like, I'm going fishing. Tie I'm a gander. Of one fly. I need a kitty. A kitty. A kitty. So there you go. So thank you so much, everybody, for um, sharing pictures. I love them. They're great. So let's get to it. Let's get back to where we were. Okay. Ahead. So um, we're going we're going to bang this one out real quick, and then we're going to share a secret. We're going to tie a third us. fly. So um, I forget who asked that. I was watching that as you, as you were. Randy. Randy was asking, how do I like the vice jaws? I don't know if you're talking about these specific vice jaws. This is the Renzetti Master with the mids jaws on them. If I were going to buy these again, I would get the Game Changer jaws because they were ex they're exactly the same, only they have the Game Changer has a little, little notch cut in right here. So if you are doing little um, shanks, Gives the other shank somewhere to sit down in. It's a little recess place. But other than that, um, this works. These work great for teeny tiny flies. The standard jaws work great for teeny tiny flies too. Where where these excel is if I'm trying to go behind the hook shank like this and come up. So if I'm trying to capture the tails or do something right, like work right in this area, that's that's where these these are maybe a touch better because I can get down right here a little bit more. But do you want to show your scissors in the side camera and what kind they are? Real quick? Sure. These are actually I've got the box for the These are thing. super super fun scissors, and I keep wanting to steal a pair because I know we've got an extra one somewhere around here. No, you're not stealing these. I know, and you keep hiding in front of me. So, so these are the super stingers. Sorry, I thought you said the side. Okay, here are the super stingers. These are the scissors I'm using. Um, and I'll switch over to the hook. So this is size 24. Here are the, the regular Renamed scissors and they're fine you can see how how nice and fine the tips are they're serrated on one side um straight on the other these are you guys probably know when i got mine um chris how long have you had your your original pair of random bags i think i got mine about a month after you got yours what two years or so it's the original pair they're still sharp i mean that's that's hard to hard to believe these are the ones that um, I'm using right now, and I've used them for not even a week. You can see the difference in the thickness of them. Um, you know, when it when you look at cutting, you want to look this way to see how thick they are. So, even though these are definitely thinner this way than this way, um, you know the how th how close you can get to the hook shank. These can definitely get a little bit closer, but these are the super stingers, and they're teeny tiny. The tips are like microscopic. So those are the scissors I'm going to use. So, okay, so it's been... And the point is slightly curved, like the really yeah. pointed. So you can sort of like tuck it up under something if you're trying to get just like the very... I don't know if the other ones are curved, but these are definitely curved. Um, yeah, I like I like them a lot. So, I, so, my, so these are almost three years old then, because like I said, I remember I got mine just after Chris got his. And... Um, and, the, and they'll still cut just fine. So if I keep talking, I won't be able to bang up my last one. So I'm going to go ahead and put my thread right in the middle. And remember, make every thread wrap count. I'm going to take my... We'll try to do this one kind of quick so you can see how this is not a long fly to tie. Take our material, set it on top, do a pinch wrap, pull it down. Bring it around right to the hook bend. I'm trying to cover everything up. Like this. Oh, honey, we switch over to the there we go. I did a pretty good job covering that up, so we'll leave that good. I do have a small piece of my tail or of my shuck going on the front, but I don't think that's gonna hurt anything. Pair of scissors here, bring this over. Cut that off. And because um oh 
Steve counted. I'll cut a handful of them off here and a handful of them off here, maybe. Because I like it to be a little little bit thinner. So we'll say we'll say that's 12 now. Shows currently sold out. Which show is sold out? Oh, the those uh stingers, yep. Yeah. They they only had they only had a oh, handful of them so in nice. the first first run. But they're gonna have more. Yep. So I'm gonna do a pinch wrap here, just like I did on, on the second one or on, on an earlier couple wraps back, keeping it right on top of the hook shank. I'm gonna do three wraps back and whisper to it. Pull this up. Sorry, you probably can't see that. This can be where it gets time consuming is when you have to cut out one fiber and it just doesn't, doesn't want to cooperate with you. But if I don't get this one, Gary, the rest of the time will be like, dude, what the heck? Make sure those butt ends are tied down nicely. Thread back to the back here. Now we'll pull this around just by pulling this up kind of tight. Bring this down. Now we'll do our pinch wrap. See, that one's almost right. I always go a little bit long. Pull it to length. So we want it to be roughly the length of the body. Now remember, this is a 24. It's a small. It's not going to be long. And we'll bring this up to the front. I'll leave that alone. I'm trying to build a little bit up, up there so that ramp's not as heavy. Now we're going to do the same thing we did a second ago. We're going to pull out our... What is that? Yep, that'll work. Pull out our peacock curl. You really don't have much room to work with. And then we're going to find, see if this one will work. Oh, that's far that's where you get the rid of that scissors. We don't, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, I didn't get them online. I don't think Jay Soccer sells them. I know um, Charlie's Flybox sells them. Um, so I know Charlie's Flybox does sell them. You can get them directly from Renamed. You can get them at Charlie's. I don't know if Blue Wheel Angler sells them, but I, I know Charlie's does. Um, now you, <laughs> Steve says just tell people that they know John and Katie. Exactly, Steve. Well, and see, on that note, I'm joking about the off everywhere. Um, just say you saw it on, on Whip Finish. Yeah, tell, tell them you saw it here because, you know, the reality is, the um, a lot of the giveaway stuff we use, like the stickers from Renamed, they gave that to us to give away, and it's good for them to hear that you guys found the stuff from through us. And if you don't feel like saying it, that's fine too. You go back to the hook, please, please, ma'am. There we go. Okay. So see, I can see that stem on the camera. I cannot see that darn thing. IRL. There it is. So you just need a macro camera to, to tie. Then you don't have to worry about anything. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see if we can get this, this part banged out without tearing or breaking. Now, I think James is asking about touching wraps or not. You can do overlapping wraps. You can do whatever you'd like. Um, but I typically just do touching. I don't leave a space. Cut that out. I'm telling the truth. The sponsor likes to know. Yep, for sure. Unfortunately, I don't, I don't know if it has to be paid to be sponsored because we don't get paid from anyone. And speaking of getting paid, Steve, 
I can't believe you haven't said how many followers or how many subscribers we have. Usually you're like right on it. Now this hackle's too big. I should have grabbed a smaller one. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'll tie this one off on the bottom. Yeah, we'll tie it off on top. Um, Because I'm going to cut this one off because it's too small, too big. But I'll finish it anyway. So one of the things that when, if I were in a lot of real shoes I would run into tying this fly is I don't have hackle that's that small. Because it is very difficult to get hackle that is um, size 22, 24. Correct? Go to one. I'm, I was hoping to go to 1,002. The tail, the, Josh, the tail material and Pat's pattern. And check out Pat tying this fly. You can just Google Pat's midge. And he's on the Lucy Blue Quill Angler uh, YouTube channel. Once I say Google it, I mean just do a search on YouTube for it. It has Pat tying it. Um, cut this off the same way. Uh, he uses uh, Zelon. There we go. He uses Zelon um, for the tail. Uh, and it's like a rust color similar to this, but it's I, I don't have Zelon. And I like the crinkliness of it, um, of the, the Zelon. And how has that shine to it? Um, Project Healing Waters, John Boy. It's for emotional and physical rehabilitation. You trim, sir, hackle after you have wrapped it to shape it up to size. Now, David, that's, that's a good... Um, um, that's a good question. Um, when the hackle is appropriately sized, I will typically leave it alone. Um, this one, I would, if I was going to fish this one, I'd probably go and trim it because that is a, a touch long. But um, normally, I'll leave the hackle alone um, and then trim it on the water if needed because it sounds silly. Uh, I'm, I'm like, I can't believe I'm even saying it, but it's easier to cut it off than just put it back on. So, but I, I, I will trim the bottom of the hackle to make it sit flatter on the water. I won't trim the hackle to make it sized correctly for the hook shank, if that makes, if that makes sense. And Steve thinks Zelon is overrated. I'm in West Virginia, Beckley, one well, cool. Atlanta's getting close. So let's do, yeah, that's what Steve's correct. Um, that's what I was trying to say. So sometimes I'll trim the bottom of it. I don't trim it around so it fits the hook. So as far as this fly is concerned, getting small hackle, either get lucky, find a saddle that's sized correctly. They do exist. Um, that This one's 22, 24. Get a neck, and um, you'll have the small stuff here in the neck. And finally... Find a hundred pack this size 22 or whatever size you want. That's going to be the easiest way. So just, and Steve, I've got mid saddle. Just because it says mid saddle does not mean it's going to be super small. Um, mid saddles are bred to be small. They're typically smaller than standard saddles. But um, getting 22s or that small is tough. If you can find the hundred pack and the size that you want, that's definitely the way to go, unless you're like me and you're like, I'm just going to buy way too much, spend way too much money on saddles. So Gary wanted me to tie a size 26 um, muddler minnow. We're not going to tie, we're not going to tie a size 26 muddler minnow, but we are going to tie a quick size 26, and this will be a separate show within itself. Um, I probably should. Um, so I'm going to use, believe it or not, 12 odd, mocha, dark mocha brown. I'm going to start right behind the hook shank, right behind the hook eye. I remember this is a 26, so there's not much to, oh, it didn't break. Oh, well. Not much shank here. And this is 2488, so it is a bent shank. That thing looks huge. I promise you, it's teeny. Like, that's the thickness of my fingernail. It's it's small. Um, so Pat's pattern calls for the the six aught uni thread, and I've used all sorts of different things. Here is the the there are two tricks to this fly tying it small. We switch over to the side here. Um, 
Number one is when you take this off the spool, take off enough to tie two flies. Cut it correctly. Um, be very careful with the, the, the thread. And I want to just transfer it over. I'm not sliding, I'm not running my hands through the thread. I'm going to do a pinch wrap here. So see how I've got it pinched right there? It's not covering the hook eye. Now I'm going to, with touching wraps, go down as far as I need to go. I'm going to go up. If I need to flatten out my thread, I'll flatten out my thread beforehand. You see how my thread's laying really flat and nice and smooth. That's exactly what we want. What color thread was that? This is dark mocha brown six aught semper fly classic wax thread. Now you saw how flat that 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 laid. If if I were going to use a semper fly version of this thread, it lays. I've either got to bundle it up to where it's like a rib, it looks like wire, or it lays super flat, which is what I love ninety nine point nine percent of the time, and it makes a nice smooth body. This one, and here's my here's my new. Here's my trick for this one. Number one is, is get two flies out of this piece of thread and then throw it away. Don't try to use the same piece of thread over and over and over again. When I run, we go over to the side. When I run my fingers like this on the thread, it starts to untwist it. You're untwisting your thread and it's flattening it out. So as I'm wrapping and I'm running my fingers to it, I'm untwisting everything. So if I will just get this in my, Hackle pliers like this. You see how it's in there now. Now, and you, now you can switch over the hook. Now, um, <clears throat> I'm good to do my, I've got my camera in the way. I should have gotten less thread out. Um, now I can do my spiral wraps here. And this is Pat Dorsey's top secret mid. There's nothing, nothing new. I'm just going to give you a couple of tricks here. So now as I'm holding my thread and I'm making these wraps, my thread is staying the correct um, spiralness because this should have almost like a quill body look to it when I'm done. But for a long time, getting this, I'm going to cord up my other, my, whatever it's called, my classic wax thread, dark, dark mocha brown, cord it up a couple wraps in here. So for a long time, that part was what I had the hardest part with. And the other trick is going to be, let's get this back to there. So see how that looks? And remember, that's a 26. That is teeny tiny. So the other trick is going to be the Glamour Madeira. So this is what you need. Screenshot this, do whatever. It's a sot number eight. Color 2400 Prism White. That's what you need right there. And where do you if, get it? If you want to buy it, you can get it from um, Blue Quill Angler, or you can get it from uh, Tailwater Junkie, which is Forest Place. So if you notice, you've got these. This this is the piece that comes off. If I tie this in and use this as my hook, as my wing, that's going to be a little bit thick. So if you will split it apart, you'll get two main trying to do it here. You get two main, there's a bunch of little ones, but there you get two main cords. And I've got one here all ready to go. So all I'm going to do is I've got it right here. Cut it off. Just a few wraps to get that locked in. White floor right might be cool. I haven't tried white floor right. That might be that might be good, Gary. Your thread is a little split on the end there. So watch your hook point. Oh man, it is. I'm gonna spin that up. Thank you, Katie. Although I think we'll redo this one. Maybe put one more in there and just whisper to it. Two more there. Gary was busy, so I stepped in. Thank you. So I'm gonna use uh, the rust. Um, super fine here. 
uh, and the pattern he calls for um, Russ Brown, I think. I can't remember. Um, so I want to do a very slender, small noodle. And as little as that is, that's probably still about twice too much. And I should have tightened that up a little bit more than I did. And we're wanting this to look like a miniature football. And that's probably about all I will need. So I'm going to go like this and pull this off. And then we'll tighten this up again. Let's see. Bring this around. There. Here. There. Take that off. I'll do our little wet finish. Making sure that eye stays nice and clear. See how my eye is still good? Kind of. Yep, it's still good. Barely, but it's good. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to go about halfway down the body or so. And on these teeny ones, it's, it's easier said than done. That might be a touch long, but when I take my finger and I push it out like that and kind of break it up a little bit, that's our little top secret midge. So... The two tricks were was grabbing your thread with your um, hack of pliers to keep from spinning and splitting your glamour Madeira in half. Um, that is, uh, that's the trick. So let's switch and um, kind of, I guess I could trim that out a little bit. Um, there we go, guys. So I'm, we're sorry that we lost the internet connection. Looks like a WD-50. I don't know if I'm familiar with the 50. Um, the wood doesn't have the wood duck in it, but anyway, um, sorry about the technical problems and um, everything we had. We got it right about an hour, I think, though, total time. So that's good. And for those of y'all that, the, that, that um, hung out with us the whole time, we really appreciate it. James, this is not a dry fly. This is one that you would typically throw on a nymph rig. Um, however, James, ask for this for Christmas. This fly is in this book. We will be tying this fly as the main fly for one of our shows. I just wanted to play around and show that that uh, that thing. Um, some materials for up to upcoming shows. Caribou. If you're still watching next uh Material order you do get some caribou because we'll be doing some caribou caddises. Um, rat and tails. rat tails got one right here, baby girl. Coming got up. my rat tail. Remember those rat tails coming up? Mm hmm. Larva, pupa, Stay adult, tuned. three stages of midges. Yep. Um, the um, I get my thing keeps falling. So the um, so this one is more as, as it would emerge, as it would be coming from the bottom to the top, little wings and stuff coming out. Um, yeah. So this one's not typically being the, the top. The nice thing about this pattern is it can be fished in a bunch of different areas. Uh, tying and fishing tailwater flies by Pat Dorsey. Um, Ruby Tews has got it. All right, guys, I'll turn it over to Katie. Thank you all so, so, so much. We uh, hope we'll see your pictures of your Pat's Midge. Tag, tag Pat in it. Tag Umquin if you want to. Tag um, Blue Quill Angler if you need anything. Give Blue Quill a call. Um, and hit the like button. If you're not subscribed to us, we're like just before we start, we're five away from 1,000 subscribers. We'd love it if you would subscribe to us. Hit the reminder button and the like button and the subscribe button steve thank you guys thanks so much i'm gonna turn it over to katie we really appreciate it see you guys next wednesday night bye everybody have a great weekend thanks for watching